Hello YouTube, it's Trevor here, Summit or Nothing. Here today going through some of my FAQs, Frequently Asked Questions. I put up a post, you might have seen it, you might have dropped me a question. Uh, so I'm going to try and get through as many of those today as I can. Giving you answers the best I can. I'm no expert, I'm just happily titting about. <laughs> finding my own way so if I can answer your questions I will if not I'll brush over them maybe make a few jokes something like that but first of all I want to answer some questions that I've jotted down that I get asked frequently which is why I, I done this Q&A really because I probably get asked a lot of these questions two or three times a week from different people uh, at least some of them more so this is a great place for me really to just get through some of those so in future when people ask me a question I can put a link to this video and just say watch that <laughs> saves me having to write so much in the comments or, or via a message whatever so anyway my FAQs first of all and then we get through to your questions the question I probably get asked the most is which tent is better or which tent should I buy the cloud up or the lantern as you know you know, I love the cloud up and I love the lantern. I probably would say I prefer the cloud up. It is great as long as you've put all the additional guidelines on there and tie off one from the back window. That will help it sort of stay really rigid in the winds. It's really good in the winds. But the lantern is a lot lighter. If you're already carrying hiking poles, then you can just use them to put it up. I've always found it a bit more of a faff to put up than the cloud up. But then the cloud up too only has one door at the front. It's got a nice vestibule, so you can do your cooking and things in there. Whereas the lantern has got two fair sized vestibules and a door either side. So it makes it feel a lot more sort of airy and roomy. So that's my answer. It's, it's, it's up to you really which one you want to go for but that's the difference between the two and the lantern as well you can get the frames the flames creed so you can buy it for sort of winter camping other than that the cloud up two is probably better than the lantern for all year camping if you just buy the standard lantern that's my answer question number two what are those dartmoor leaflet guides and where do you get them right i think that they've been discontinued I'm afraid but this is basically what they are I got two boxes my mum's picked them up for me a while ago she found them in a charity shop so yeah keep looking and you might find them so it's basically two boxes one's the North Moor one's the South there's several walks in each and yeah, they're all fit onto these little leaflets and those each leaflet is two walks so that's what they are they're called uh, Footloose Pocket Guides, so you can look out for them, you might find them on eBay here and there, or whatever you, but um, yeah, that's what they are, Footloose Pocket Guides. Question number three, this one I get asked weekly, where's the best place to camp on Dartmoor? Now, to me, there, there is no best place, but I've always said that a good place for beginners is the Merivale area. There's a video here, linked which will go through that, uh, why I like that area so much. But also, yeah, camp wherever you like. There's lots of lovely places to camp on Dartmoor, but always check the camping map and always leave no trace. No fires, you know, follow the rules. It's important that you follow the rules and not ruin it for everyone by breaking the rules. So, another question I often get asked, do you have to buy expensive camping and hiking gear to enjoy yourself or do you have to buy expensive gear to enjoy camping or hiking which I've always answered no I mean I've done it for four years on budget gear and I've enjoyed it I've had a great time but as time's going on and I'm sort of building up my kit I'm beginning to notice that there are certain areas that perhaps you should spend a little bit more or you might have to spend a little bit more but yeah, uh, to start with, I don't think you do. I think it's just a case of getting out there, buying what you need and just having a go. Seeing what, how you feel and then what you want to upgrade as you go on. And another question I get asked almost daily actually is, next time you go out camping, can I come? 
which I know I always sound rude, I always feel rude saying no, but obviously it's it's a bit strange. I don't know who you are. I know you feel like you know me, but um, I can't say yes to one person. I'll have to say yes to everyone, and it, I get asked it almost daily anyway. But there are, you know, I do have a Patreon page where I will be organising like walks and hopefully a wild camp. Uh, walks and hopefully a wild camp at some point for the top tier patrons on a sort of a raffle sort of scheme we've done one walk already plus once we allow bigger groups i'm going to be doing some more guided charity walks people are always welcome to join up those so i'll give more information on that anyway so that was my frequently asked questions and now it's turned into a bit of a q a which uh let's go through it so I got asked a fair few questions here, so this could take a little time. Android Martian, Camping Gear Update 2020 Backpack. Well, I'm on the lookout for a new backpack. I've got two that I take camping with me. One is my Crew Archer, uh, four class from Decathlon. And my other is my Van Gogh Sherpa. Now, I like the Mango Sherpa because I can fit everything in it and it's got big pockets and I like having side pockets on a bag. Both of those bags do. But And the Sherpa's bigger, so I can fit more in it. The four class is a 50 litre, so I struggle to fit everything in it. It bilges over the side. I prefer the the Sherpa, if I'm honest. It's a bit more comfy. It's got the, like, the back, you know, holds onto your back better. But it's a lot heavier I think it's like a whole kilogram heavier than the decathlon so I'm looking for a bag which is the size of the Sherpa but the weight of the decathlon really so uh, pants waterproof I just have sort of I throw in some waterproof trousers and you know the trespass trousers and Packamax I've got like the OEX waterproof jacket which condensates inside but it's all right it's it does its job the fleece I I've got a North Ridge fleece which is quite hot to be honest it's a micro fleece but it's it's quite a thick one so it's ideal for the winter but in the summer it's a bit much I did used to have another one I can't think of the brand but I could never find one quite the same fleece torch well, I've got now. I've got the O light torch. Um, I've got a, a little head head torch. All these I've been through in different videos, but I bought brighter ones for filming. Really, my normal little summit uh, headlamp that I had, the battery one, wasn't that great for filming external shots of the tent at night. So the sleeping bag. Heart. Oh, I've just. You might have seen the video. I've just got the OEX winter um, sleeping bag, the Leviathan. Apart from that, I use a down sleeping bag in the summer. The Nature Hike down sleeping bag that's done me proud. It's water resistant and it's lightweight and it compacts really well. Um, and I was using the Van Gogh Latitude 300 in the winter, which was a, I think a nought degrees comfort rating. But my new one is a down sleeping bag, the OEX Leviathan down sleeping bag, and it's at not minus nine comfort rate, so I'm going to be quite snug in that. Um, favorite locations to hike and camp? The, it, how long's a piece of string? I just, I love it anywhere really. Um, and tips of how to choose a good pitching location: somewhere flat, somewhere dry, sort of good, good grass. <laughs> That's about it really. Just think I want to camp in this spot, go there and just find the best pot, spot you can. You don't want it wet, you don't want it on a slope. Easy. Um, so that was Android Martian, that was a big question to start with. Lacing trails. Has the meaning of camping walking changed for you from when you started to now? Um, it, it has a bit because of the channel really. It's it, I feel more like I have to keep going out there now, whereas at first it was a more of a exciting, it still is exciting, I still love it, but it's became a bit of a chore because I'm trying to keep sort of up to date with the content. Yeah, it's still, 
still great fun. I still love, I look forward to the, the hikes. Plotting my routes now is, I use the View Ranger to plot routes so I can look online and at the OS map online and plot the route and you can see exactly how long. So I suppose it's like doing it on an OS map, but I mean, when me and Nate used to do it, we used to just get together and go, which area should we go today? And that was in the morning before we're going out. So now at least I have plotted routes and then I can think about it leading up to it. That was lacing trails. And begin. Or what sort of size backpack would you recommend ish? Well, for date, I always carry more than I see other people with, with a lot less sized packs than I end up carrying. Um, so I don't think I'm the man to answer that. I carry camera gear and all that sort of thing as well. I think for a day hike, if you can get just a few bits in a 25 litre bag, that's good going. Or um, if you can aim to get everything in a 50 litre bag, you're doing well for a wild camp, I think. In the winter, maybe more. Graham Thornton, what is your winter sleep system? I've discussed that one already. So again, that's... Um, I'm just testing out a new OEX sleeping bag now. I'm still looking for a decent winter sleeping mat, roll mat at the moment. William Osborne, why do you wild camp? Why not? I don't know, I love it. Um, and I didn't, when we first started it was hiking and I didn't want to camp and I think the more we went to Dartmoor and the more we'd see people sort of camping and the more I got to like and appreciate Dartmoor and the remoteness of it, I thought it felt like the next step, it was an adventure and then to do it with Nath was good fun but then to start going out on my own then it, it feels really liberating, it's just yeah, to be up on a tour in the middle of Dartmoor all isolated on your own it just is lovely, especially on a clear night like the Pew Tour camp I did, I was just literally lying out on the rocks till about midnight just looking up at the stars, it was amazing uh, that's why. Uh, David Banham, have you ever been caught wild camping and asked to move on? Um, no, I've I've done a couple of stealth camps uh, on the coast, which I've been lucky. One was in a field, a farmer's field. They never saw me, but I was ducking, you know. Uh, on Dartmoor, the places I camp, I don't really, you know, it's legal to camp there, so that's not an issue there. In most areas, anyway. But no, I've not been so far. Harry McSherry, how much food do you take with you on a day hike? Too much. <laughs> when I took, when I'd done the um, Dartmoor in a day, I took way too much food. I hardly touched any of it. Um, but well, if I go out doing my coast walk now, I just put a tub away a container just with packed lunch in it, really. And uh, yeah, it's just. Just stop for some crackers at 10 and then have a sandwich or a pasty at dinner time really. So it's just like a, a work lunch box. Um, official Callum. Best down sleeping bag for a minus two-ish degree comfort mark at a non-extortion price. Well as you know I've been looking at this Callum. Um, so again I've bought the OEX Leviathan which I thought wasn't too bad a price for the comfort rate. And a minus nine comfort rate so that's going to be... Really toasty, but that was about 120 quid from Go Outdoors, which I didn't think was too bad for a down sleeping bag. But I've only ever tried one down sleeping bag up until now, so and that was a summer one, not really ideal for. Chris Hansen, uh, if you could get one dream piece of equipment for the channel, filming or hiking, what would it be? I've always been a sucker for the Terra Nova, but could never justify the price. Yeah, I think the same really, uh, a decent tent. I was interested in the Hubba Hubba for years because we sort of compared it to the Cloud Up when we got it. It's a similar weight, a similar size. Um, but yeah, I think I'd rather, I, I've seen a lot of people using them now, so I'm not that keen. As soon as everyone's doing something, I want to do my own thing, you know. So I think, uh, yeah, a Terra Nova, you know, a decent, like, Hilleberg or something like that. I'd love to try a decent tent and see what the difference is, really. Preacher Bear. As someone that has always loved walking and camping in God countryside, I'm needing a little advice. 
I'm having to use a wheelchair. To this end, do you have any wheelchair users that watch your channel that can give me, a novice chair camper, some pointers? So anyone can help out uh, Preacher Bear, leave a comment below and Preacher Bear just have a scroll through, keep coming back and having a look and seeing what advice you can people are giving you for being in a wheelchair. Sorry to hear about that, that's a bit of a shame there. Andy M. More so for wild camping, have you come across any of the more popular brands of tents that us less experienced and less knowledgeable should avoid at all costs, even though they are, they are advertised for that purpose? Sorry. Not really. I know I bang on about the uh, MSR Elixir when we went out with Tom and it, it buckled, but, you know, it was a bit disappointing, a bit disappointing for Tom, but they did replace the poles but apart from that I've had no experience with the more expensive tents. Kelly Mitchell do you take anything different when you have your son with you? Uh, not really I just take an extra obviously it's just two of everything I have to take um, and we've only been out there once he's not as keen as he was <laughs> And it's like the hiking involved he he's not interested in, which is a shame. I would have liked to have got out for him, with him this year. But I did take an over quilt just to have over the top of us both. So he's in a sleeping bag each with a quilt on top. But that was about it. Michaela Watkins. What is, in your opinion, the most economical way of staying warm while sleeping at near zero temperatures? Sleeping bag, liner, base layers. Yeah, putting a base layer on. I always leave it till sort of I'm getting in my tent. I, I layer up slowly uh, when I'm camping. So I might put my base layers on first before I get in my sleeping bag, you know, and then slowly get in. Um, if it's cold, you know, eat something fatty but hot, you know, with a high fat content and that'll warm you through. Do some sit-ups in your tent, that keeps you warm. And it also, you know, if you do 20, 30 sit-ups, you soon warm your tent up as well. You radiate quite a lot of heat. And just, yeah, hot drink before bed. But I always leave everything to the last minute. Because if you've got hours and hours ahead of you, you know, you've almost got to ration every process. That's what I think, anyway. Uh, Neil Gerlin, just reading some comments below and watching your latest adventure out. Did you use your Sea to Summit reactor liner for sleeping bag or was it down to the tent? Which one was that? Um, I don't think this is referring to my cold camp because this is six days ago and that only went live last night as I'm recording this. So I've taken it with me every time but I only used it this last time when I went out and it was cold and as I was saying a minute ago about saving things until you know that liner was something that I, I left out until it got colder again in the night and then I got in the liner it made a little bit of difference but I think being in that uh, single skin tent was just it was too cold that wind was whipping through um, so the liner I didn't think made, felt like it made a lot of difference but it probably did Seeking happiness How many sheep can you fit in your cloud to tent? Three on a good night uh, If you were bordering on hypothermia which member of take that would you cuddle up with to share the body heat? I'd probably do like what Harrison Ford did with the uh, in Empire Strikes Back where he cuts that thing open, spills their guts out. I'll probably do that with them and wrap myself in their intestines and guts so they never had to sing again. And any intention to do a really big through hike one day such as the Pacific Crest Trail in the USA? Now I would love to. I'm hoping that this channel will grow to a point where I can start putting aside to do, you know, a bigger walk you know, two or three weeks, maybe months out and have enough sort of income to cover the loss of cost at home. Because at the moment we live on a shoestring budget anyway with our family. 
So I'm doing this as well as work and it's trying to balance everything that I'm, I'm the one at home with the kids when they're off. Um, so I'm self-employed so my job I juggle around the children and this so I mean that's what's holding me back but I would love to do more and more and once the kids are all growing up then Donna I think would like to come on and we, we've got some big plans for the future but probably not for another 10 years or so but that's it isn't it parenting takes uh, takes precedent uh, Ian Reynolds you asking the same sort of uh, question will you be walking any other long distance paths for instance offers dyke or maybe some other challenges like the Yorkshire Free Peaks definitely want to do the Yorkshire Free Peaks challenge we was going to do that this year um, I had discussed it with the chaps who we went to Romania with I think we was going to do it with them I haven't really seen a lot of them this year um, but yeah I'm up for doing a lot more uh, sort of bigger walks and challenges hopefully raise some money as well at the same time for charities Skater Burn, have you ever been have you ever been sick on a long hike or wild camp? Not since Cubs. <laughs> uh, Mali Daglish, how good are jet boil style cook sets? They always look massive on video, but when I look at them in person it looks like I've just put together a kind of surprise. Yeah, I'm like as you know, I'm testing out the OEX thing. I've got different stoves. I can't really I've I can't really rate the jet ball. It's done all right, but all I've used it for is really a kettle. You know, you can't. I haven't been able to cook on it, and even like boiling things in the bag, it either boils over, and then I turn it down, and it nothing happens until you turn it right down. You have to have it practically off to cut the flame down. There's no sort of intermittent, and then it peters out, and then you have to light it again. And I've found it's a bloody faff. For something that's like 70, 80 quid new, it's shit. Sorry, that's how I feel about it. So that's why I'm looking for different things. And I know people rate other jet boils, but at the moment I think, is it worth spending that sort of money on, you know, essentially just a kettle? No. There's better ones out there, cheaper ones out there that you can do just as well. So uh, I'm looking at a few of those at the moment. I've bought the jobs worth so I'll be looking to you know that's like a 20 30 quid carbon copy basically of the jet ball I'll be looking at the two together and seeing how they compare Graham Thornton if you could go back in time what advice would you give yourself when you were first starting out wild camping I don't know really I don't uh I don't know, I've learned things as I've gone along and I think there's a progress to how we do things in life, isn't there? A progression and I think how I'm going on, it's fine. I've never really had really bad experiences out there, touch wood. Um, I suppose the one thing was just check the camping map because at the first time we didn't even know there was a camping map so I suppose that was the one thing we could have given ourselves a heads up for the Dartmoor camping map Woja 133 or L33 Hi Trev, have you heard of Polycro? I use it as a ground sheet, it's tough, super lightweight it's clear plastic sheet for protecting windows Nath would probably appreciate it for use with a tarp keeps damp and creepy crawlies out available from Amazon and a lot cheaper than a footprint ground sheet um, I've not heard of that. I've looked at different things, but I mean, I'm I'm veering away from the tarp, and Nafe's veering away from the tarp at the moment. But no, if we used anything as a ground sheet, it would have to be something not going to bring the weight up to tent. Else, you'd just as well take the tent, and yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, Wessex hiking. Any tips for foot care, lotions, potions, choosing socks and shoes? I've always been really lucky with my feet. I've never had blisters. They don't really smell, they've never really smelt like that. Um, so my only advice I suppose is um, just cut your toenails before you go walking. Because that's what happens, like I get a little sharp edge on my little toe. It sort of grows out and sometimes that rubs against the toe next to it. I've been out where I haven't trimmed that off the night before. They're not huge toenails, but just that little bit and it will cut into the toe next to me. That's the only sort of foot pain I've had. Other than that. Yeah, 
get decent pairs of hiking socks can't hurt decent pair of boots but make sure you you know tried them on found what ones suit you uh, Lee Walmsley how much are the two tents in a gate in the giveaway made on eBay <laughs> yeah do you think they just sold them straight away um, a bit of a kit update would be good clothing doesn't get covered so much and current kit you wouldn't go without um, so I sort of do that every time I go out I run through my kit um, I don't really go through the clothing I mean I just bought a pair of hiking trousers they're lightweight from decathlon I try and find a link but every time I've looked they're not on their shop anymore I just bought them in a store but I've not really found them online but they was decent they're sort of stretchy they're lightweight they zip off um, they were good other than that it's just wicking t-shirts uh, you know technical t-shirts I've been buying just to wear underneath it's more about the layer in these days um, than when we used to go out in our cotton t-shirts and what have you um, bit of kit that I wouldn't go without tent <laughs> <laughs> from camping I don't know Tom Egan when hiking or camping solo what do you do to keep motivated and what's the one luxury item you always have to take <sighs> um I don't know I just enjoy the walking especially on the coast I don't know I don't I don't ever f sort of flag when I'm out on my own I quite like it I think on the coast path, it always used to be like if I was doing like a 15 mile walk, about seven and a half miles, I'd always have like a flash of panic, like, oh God, what am I doing this for? <laughs> but I'd keep going. Um, it's always nice to know that you're going home to the family. Uh, I'm quite soppy like that when I'm away from the family for too long. I um, can't wait to get back to them. And then when I get back to them, I'm sort of snapping at them to be quiet and leave me alone in minutes. <laughs> but... Um, and it's nice when they're there at the other end to meet me. That always drives me on as well. Or just getting home for dinner <laughs> is always a nice one to sort of motivate me to the end. Other than that, it's just one foot in front of the other. Just enjoy the views and just keep going. And what was the other question? What's one luxury item you would always have to take? I don't know. I don't. I just take what I need. I don't really have an item where I'm like, oh, I must must have that um, no I don't know really uh, sorry Lloyd Ashby do you think it's better to take your time buying kit saving up for your perfect kit first time or going out and buying cheaper kit and replacing it as you go just thinking about cost and comfort long term so Lloyd that was one of my frequently asked questions really um, Many people, you know, there's a lot of people out there who love to go out and buy all the best, biggest and best things. I never had that luxury myself. So I just bought what I needed as and when I needed it. At first I was buying budget, you know, buying budget gear and then looking to upgrade it or you soon tell if it's crap or not and if you need to spend a little bit more. But I think there's a, a decent, sort of reasonably priced mid-range market for most things. Uh, it's usually safer to go there than like dirt cheap or really expensive. So, And last but definitely not least, South Coast Outdoors, what is your favourite meal to cook up? Well, out on the trail, as you know, I've been doing the foil bags that I boil. Um, when I've done some titting about in the garden, I've done fry-ups and things. I like cooking a fry-up. I love cooking at home. I like cooking. I'm, I'm the one, I love cooking a roast. I've sort of got my special ways of doing different food. You know, different parts of the roast. Like I do sautéed swedes, uh, parmesan and garlic, Brussels sprouts, things like that. You know, but to to cook out on this thing, I enjoy doing those uh, little uh, pizzas that Tom taught me. They are great. The kids love them as well. And whenever I go out camping with other people, I usually do them because they're nice and easy and it's a good way to teach other people to cook out on the trail. But if I was cooking at home, possibly preparing one of those boiling the bag meals, a stew, I love a good stew. Um, leave it cooking all day and I've got one we had last week actually, so I've foil, foil bagged that up, ready. Or a chilli, chilli's going down really well, so... 
there you go questions and answers that was it thank you ever so much for watching hope you that's helped answer some questions and um, yeah thanks for sending those in see you again soon peace